Jeez, you already know what it is. Myself, Una for Axel, aka Omega Axel, back once again, but in the ancestors' work. What's good? Walk on. What's going down for the live and locked in fam? Peace, peace, and more powers as always. Big black African heart filled thank you to each and every single one of the Patreon supporters. You know that I appreciate you, and you know, if I've been fortunate enough to meet you, I hope you know that you know, the, the energy that we exchanged was genuine. Um, today we're back with some more jewels off my bookshelf, but today we are outside because the weather is so nice. Um, I'm gonna actually be covering two books this session. We're gonna do um, a very small section straight out of the use of guide to balance mind, body, and spirit because you know, you know we have to kind of um, we have to understand that there are three spheres to um, this reality that we live in body we have the mind and we have the spirit and whenever any one of those spheres is out of equilibrium how can we expect to be able to manifest the truest and most genuine version of ourselves so um as many of you will already know if you've been tuning in you know, we've been covering a variety of different topics we've covered the heart space and returning back to the heart we have also covered things like the subconscious mind, we have covered the aura system. And before I move on from the user guide, I actually just want to talk about um, the section in here, the metaph metaphysics of the pineal gland and um, the detoxification of the pineal gland. Because you already know, so many people in this quote-unquote quasi-pseudo-woke community are very quick to attach themselves to this you know third eye woke status as if to say they have really attained that status and i'm saying attain the status it's not a status it is a physical state because you know the majority of people as you come to find when you start reading you know the majority of people by the time that they turn into a teenager are fully decalcified and um, sorry calcified so what have you been doing to, to, to change that? And many people can't answer that question when you ask them that. So, um, yeah, I mean, let's not waste any time. Let me actually just get straight into it. Um, the next book, sorry, by the way, that we'll be getting into is a book that I haven't actually finished reading yet. It's called The Stars of Deep, or The Start of Deep Beginnings, The Genesis of African Science and Technology. And it's written by um, Charles S. Finch III. And so far, I mean, I'm only about maybe 150 pages in, and it's about a 380-page book, and I'm thoroughly impressed. I'm thoroughly impressed by the information, the methodology of the presentation, and the verbiage that is used to present and portray certain arguments, which, I, I mean, I'm humble enough to be able to admit I've struggled trying to convey to other people before in the past, so now to be able to have the scholastic ammunition to be able to like, clap back at people is, um, for me, invaluable. Um, so let's just get it in anyway. Let's start with the user guide as in, as we said we were gonna. So, metaphysics of the pineal gland, quote unquote, the third eye. Um, so if you've read the book or, or have began reading the book, you would have already known that we'd have touched briefly on the subject that the pineal gland or the third eye, in retrospect, Okay, the third eye is actually our first eye, and it's actually formed in the womb well before our physical eyeballs. And it is actually a melanin construct, and it is considered to be the seat of the soul. Now, the pineal gland is very misunderstood by the Western medicine and Western scholars. It was not until 1958 that more information was made available to a larger audience. Now, the information pertaining the pineal gland was kept hidden mainly by secret societies and for many years prior to this that was the case now the subject um, the subject of the pineal gland was first studied by quote-unquote occultists they were able to connect the universe higher energies and extraterrestrial influences to gather this information now they had their great connection to the higher spiritual realm enabling them to gain success in a more in-depth 
knowledge. Now, the word occult comes from the Latin word occultus, which means hidden, secret, or mysterious, of relating to or dealing with supernatural influences, agencies, or phenomena beyond the realm of human comprehension. Unscrutable, available only to the initiate or the secret. So those are all the different kind of meanings of the word occult. Now, once the information was studied by the occultist, it was then formatted in writing, interpreted, and then passed out to the scholars. In the East, the pineal gland has always been given recognition. Ancient Chemites, or the Gomech, or the people of ancient Egypt, showed symbology of the pineal gland, including the unique carved in the walls of great pyramids and surrounding areas, whilst Hindus symbolize it with the red dot on their forehead, that you might be familiar with the Eye of Horus, or the all-seeing eye. So here's just a quick cheeky image. Of course, we all know that the people of ancient Kemet represented the third eye. Um, so remarkable similarities exist between the Vemetch symbolism on the anatomical structure of the pineal gland and the midbrain region of the human brain. Now, the Westerners are new people to the planet. Only now are they beginning to understand and accept this ancient knowledge of self. The pineal gland takes form similar to a pine cone, and in most people it is of the size of a grain of rice. The pineal gland is actually the remnant of a higher gland called the Bartholomew, uh, the Bartholomew gland. At one point the two were connected. Located in the throat, the Bartholomew gland was responsible for ensuring that the spiritual connection between the human consciousness and the fourth dimensional energy. It was responsible for supporting higher senses of telepathy, clairvoyance, intuition, and psychometry. Uh, the pineal gland is also connected to the body's endorsement system. The system is like an informational gateway that uses different chemical messages like hormones to control the body functions and feelings of intuition. Now, the third eye is responsible for the secretion of melatonin and serotonin into the endorsement system. When it is light and the solar energy is present, serotonin is secreted into the bloodstream, and when it is dark and lunar energy is present, melatonin is secreted. The quality of the secretion is based on the amount of light information present in the environment. Now, serotonin is responsible for the feelings and sensations of being awake and energized, while melatonin is the opposite and it prepares the body for sleep. Feeling low on energy and suffering with insomnia can be closely related to the imbalance in one of the two chemicals. When you detoxify physically and energetically and choose to work towards enhancing the functioning of the pineal gland, higher intelligence is gradually accessible mainly through meditation or meditational states. Modern science views the hormonal messengers as chemicals on a physical level only. However, these chemicals are full of light codes and information that go far beyond the comprehension of human beings and the human mind. The higher chakra system in relation to the third eye. Now, alongside the physical dimensions and understanding of the pineal gland, there are also non-physical aspects of the third eye. You have the third eye, or the Anya chakra, which is located in the central forehead. Whilst the crown chakra is located at the top of your head, the eye chakra relates to the intellectual commands, perception, knowledge, and authority. The crown chakra element is a representation of the cosmic and divine energy and flow, often experienced as an inner light that emanates from the deepest part of one's being. The crown chakra is also represented, oh, sorry, also represents multidimensional consciousness. Your reality is no longer limited as your consciousness extends beyond the ego and greater sense of self is realized. To enable the flow of higher information into your conscious energy field, these higher energy centers must be free from blockages, emotional or mental. Blockages only serve to disrupt the passing of information and delivery of the hormonal messages. Messages, sorry. When you feel these things and get emotional, that's information. There is a reason why emotions are arising. You must listen to which part of your intuition is signaling the red flags. A large part of this is fear. If you fear something, then you should study that fear and develop a greater understanding to conquer it in order to serve your evolution and greater good. As your spirit guides, quote unquote, angels or higher beings or ancestors in which you are in a constant connection with and communicate through the pineal gland, Information is processed through the emotional messages that are required to be acknowledged and to interpret guidance regarding daily life and situations. As detailed earlier, your brain is just a processor. It is not where the mind is located in the place where thoughts are generated. Um, the pineal gland is much older than the brain, 
information and light code are sent from the universe, or sorry, the universal mind, and picked up by the third eye transmission device. The mind, quote unquote, pineal glands. We also mentioned that information travels in, travels in light on a sub, at a subatomic level. This is the main factor in regards to human evolution and encourages the construction of how your DNA is upgraded, unlocked and expanded, ultimately working to enhance the state of consciousness and personal growth. A final per point worth noting about the pineal gland is DMT, dimethyltryptamine, which is widely known as the spirit molecule. Its presence is widespread throughout the planet kingdom and present in trace amounts within mammals, including humans, where it functions as a trace amin oh, trace amino transmitter. DMT is present in all living beings, and it is secreted at different times from the pineal gland, mainly during the dreamscape and theta sleep cycle. When you dream, the pineal gland is producing DMT. It is poss also it is responsible for your imagination, crossing the formless boundaries into other realms. The same goes for when you practice outer body travel, astral projection, and astral projection. The DMT is secreted right before death, and this is how the soul transitions from the body, taking away any pain and trauma. Meditation practices, alongside the consumption of natural alkaline foods, such um, which have been known to stimulate DMT production. Our ancient ancestors and shamans who work alongside nature and are assisted by the spiritual realms ingest plants such as ayahuasca for the healing to take place and for the, um, to be filtered from the higher realms down to the physical plane. This plant is high in natural DMT and can take your soul on a journey to other realms. We actually expand on shamanic healing and plants later on in more depth in the book. Um, and the last section that we're going to cover real, real quick is um, detoxification of um, the pineal gland because like I said so many people are talking about um, how woke they are and how you know how <laughs> how open their third eye is but most people's pineal gland is heavily calcified by the time they are 17 years old mainly due to the consumption of contaminated genetically modified foods harmful processed sugars alcohol acidic um, thought processes and fluoridated water it appears as a mass of calcium during a MRI scan. Calcification is the build of calcium phosphate crystals in various parts of the body, an absolute enemy to consciousness. So here, real quick, is just a quick image of um, a, decal uh, a calcified pineal gland. So some ways to actually help you decalcify yourself would be to avoid all things fluoride, such as tap water. That includes cooking with tap water, showering without a filter, fluoridated toothpaste, inorganic fruits, vegetables, red meat, and any other artificial foods or drinks. It can be difficult to maintain a strict supply of freshly um, prepared organic fruit and vegetables in your diet, but it is important to start where you are and begin to make changes where they become possible. Pineal gland detoxifies with stimulants are things such as wheatgrass, corella, spirulina, blue or green algae, iodine, zeolite, ginseng, borax, um, bentonite clay, chlorophyll, dense foods, and blue skate liver oil derived from fish. So obviously if you're a vegan, then that's not for you. Um, natural foods such as raw cacao, goji berries, cilantro, watermelon, bananas, honeys, coconut oil, hemp seeds, seaweed, noni juice. Stop eating white sugar completely. Juice fasting and European therapy are very, very effective. Fasting is also a very effective thing as well. The body, okay, um, the chapter that we have in the book actually covers um, those, those topics in detail. Um, ayahuasca and ibogaine are also very, very good to awaken the pineal gland. Essential oils can also help with the stimulation of the pineal gland and actually facilitate states of spiritual awareness such as um, similar to meditation and astral projection. Particularly effective oils include things like lavender, sandalwood, frankincense, parsley, divana, pine, and pink lotus. Raw apple cider vinegar, which I've heard a lot of controversy about, we have kind of stuck in the book as, as, a, as a positive. Um, of course, information changes all over time, so if we are incorrect, teachers don't try to lock down on us like we're some type of retards. Um, but raw apple cider vinegar contains malic acid, and make sure it's raw. Okay, as it is very, very important. Bragg's is supposed to be the best brand. You can actually fill a glass um, bottle with ionized alkaline, uh, alkaline water, eight tablespoons of Bragg's cider vinegar, and two tablespoons of raw local honey, and that's a very, very um, effective detoxing juice. It doesn't taste very nice, which is what the honey's for. 
Um, sun gazing is very, very good during the first 15, hour, um, 15 minutes of sunrise and the last 15 minutes of sunset, and it will do wonders for your pineal gland. And again, there's more information about sun gazing in the uh, body section of the book. Regular meditation and chanting is very, very good too. Chanting causes a tetrahedron-shaped nose bone um, to resonate, which encourages pineal gland stimulation, ultimately enhancing secreted amounts of beneficial hormones. Now, the beneficial hormones such as HJV work towards, or sorry, HGV work towards keeping the appearance youthful. The sound OM, which resonates with the fourth chakra known as the heart center, um, is the seat of unconditional love. Now, the sound AM uh, resonates with the crown chakra, and chanting OM and AIM um, opens you up to universal and cosmic awareness, and you can chant anywhere from five minutes to however long you feel to do that. Um, crystals that are actually beneficial to the pineal gland include things like amethyst, laser quartz, moonstone, um, purple sapphire, purple violet, tourmaline, vodanite, rose aura, sodalite, any indigo, violet or dark purple gemstone or crystal that can be used to stimulate your pineal gland and open balance and align your sixth and seventh chakras. Placing crystals directly onto your third eye or brow chakra for 15 to 30 minutes a day can greatly accelerate the opening, balancing and alignment of the non-physical aspects of the pineal gland. Now, the best exercise for the pineal gland and health stimulation is to use an amethyst of this crystal or wand and point it at the third eye. This point of the wand should, uh, sorry, should touch your skin. Then, look up directly at the sun with your eyes closed. Do this on a daily, uh, daily, ideally, or whenever possible, for about 5 to 10 minutes. The sun rays penetrate through the base of the obelisk wand and beam directly into the pineal gland, directly stimulating it. Now, many people have become fixated on opening the pineal gland as a shortcut to spiritual awakening. They may hope for a vision or to meet a spiritual being with all of the answers to their questions. It is, however, deeper than this. As mentioned earlier, all energy centers need to be balanced. Many people who provide information on opening the third eye often to forget to add the importance of the open and the awareness of the heart space. Without an open and activated heart, you could have visions, messages and vis uh, visitations from higher dimension beings, but be unable to tell the truth from trickery. The heart only deals with true on uh, sorry truth on a very deep, intuitive, and what is um, what connects you to everything else in the universe. Without the inner knowing of the heart, the person can be easily deceived. The mind can really mess with you. Awakening should be gradual, natural. Nothing should be rushed. It should be a organic process throughout one's life. It is not about phenomena, extrasensory perceptions, and powers or side effects. You know, you're not going to become an X Men. Yeah. You're not going to become a mutant, but most often people should be focused on their heart, which we actually talk about in the second chapter of the book. Now, I'm rather getting cold out here, so instead of actually going into the second session right now, I'm going to record it in the part two, because it actually deserves its own section, because they are totally unrelated pieces of information. So, thank you for tuning in to another jewel from the bookshelf, okay? That's the use of guide to balance mind, body, and spirit. This will be the last session that we cover on this one because we've done about maybe four or five, maybe even six or seven sessions on that. So, um, you know, if you want to go and support that, you can check the links that are in the bio. You can head to Amazon and search for the USA Guide to Balance. It's Y-U-S-A. Yeah. But, um, yes, peace and more powers. Uncle Joss and Neb, Sha'em Hotep, Ashe. Rest in peace to all of the ancestors. Keep it moving. Keep it righteous.